What's up, family? Thank you guys so much for tuning in right here at Love Always Ministries. Whether you're on YouTube or you're tuning in on podcast, we want to say thank you so much for tuning in. And if this is your first time here, especially on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, press the like button. And if you're listening on podcast, make sure to drop a review because my beautiful wife and I, we tune in and we read every single one of those. So once again, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And today is going to be an incredible conversation because we are going to talk about what to do when you feel behind. But before we get in and we talk about it, I have a good friend of mine, one of my best friends, one of my dearest friends. I talked to this gentleman who's right next to me as much as I talk to my wife, uh, we pretty much talk that much almost every single day. Um, and I'm just so grateful to have him. Guys, give it up for my good friend, Pastor TJ Anglin. Woo. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Coming all the way from Heart Revolution yeah. Church in San Diego, California. How are you enjoying Santa Barbara, Bishop? So far, so good. So far, so it good. It's true. Every day we talk. Eight o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. We wake up. On the road, come drop on. the kids off. Come on, call Richard, do the check-in. So. Let's go, man. We're we're consistently talking, and I think that's uh, so imperative too to have good friendships in your life, people that will edify you, strengthen you, and not only that to keep you accountable. I'm very grateful for you and everything that you have done in my life. So thank you, man, for being oh, here. Well, Bishop, today we're going to talk about what to do when you feel behind. Mm-hmm. I think uh, personally, that's probably. Um, one of the most difficult areas in life when you do feel like you're left behind. Yeah. Maybe for some of those out there, they feel left behind because they're not married. They're still single. They're still looking. Uh, they're past their quote unquote like timeline and they're not there yet. Or maybe, you know, God spoke to their life that something was going to come to pass and, and um, they got this word privately, yet they haven't seen it publicly. And, and it's just, uh, it's causing some despair in their life. And they're feeling like, man, God, are you going to come through? Did you forget about me? And, you know, you and I were talking earlier about, you know, social media. And so, and so many times when we're on social media, we can compare our life to other people's lives and et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of things that we can battle with when it comes to us feeling left behind. And and that's the conversation I want to talk to you about. So my guess, my big question for you is, have you ever felt left behind? Yeah, I would start off with uh, more, you, you know, like when you're married and you have common problems uh-huh. and then you talk to somebody and they have those common problems. Yeah. And it was like a big deal to you. Mm. But in the marriage world, it wasn't a big deal. It was a normal thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, I mean, in the single world, whatever whatever world you're a part of, uh-huh. there's things that need to be normalized. One of those things is we all, at some point in our life, mm. no matter how far along we are, we'll feel the feeling of feeling behind. Yes, sir. We'll all feel it. Yes, sir. Um, in my life, I feel like in some areas I've come so far, yet in some areas I feel so far behind. Mm, what do you mean by that? Uh, so in, in some areas, you know, if if you were to compare, you know, to how many kids I have, I have five kids, so mm. I'm well on my way. You yeah, know? But yeah, if I yeah. compare myself to somebody else, oh, I'm so far behind. Mm, and mm. so that, that's an interesting thing because obviously like comparison is – uh, a big deal for why we feel behind. Yep. Yep. Um, somebody came to me um, and they said, Hey, we're going to be launching, you know, like 18 campuses and they mm-hmm. start casting all this vision. And then they told me like, how would you feel? Like, is that what you want to do? Do you want to have like 18 campuses? Mm-hmm. And I thought about that and I felt so far behind. Yeah. Yeah. I start feeling a sense of anxiety and I thought, I need to reframe that question because that wasn't meant for me. Yeah. That's somebody else's calling yep. being projected on me. Mm. So I reframed it in this way. Um, hey, TJ, do you want to have 18 children? And now all of a sudden, that's an easy no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, straight up. So I said, no, I don't want to have 18 children. I'd like to have five children and 18 grandchildren. Mm. Because my picture is different than your picture. Absolutely. No, I don't want 18 campuses. I don't have the capacity for 18 campuses. I don't have the desire for 18 campuses. That's your calling. That's your anointing. So uh, I think about Saul and David. Mm. Saul killed his thousands, the people said. They sang a song. And David, his tens of thousands. And and 
Saul became angry mm. at David, not because Saul was comparing himself to David, mm. but because people were comparing David to Saul. Yep. So he took on their comparison and it made him angry. Mm. Anger is really a secondary emotion to hurt. Yep. yep. It hurt him mm. because he was the guy his name means asked for. Mm. He was the guy that in one season people were asking for him. Mm. And so he, he, he lived by that. And then in the next season, people quit asking for him. Yeah, exactly. And he started getting hurt by it. Mm. And he started feeling rejected and he started feeling like he was behind. Yeah. And what did he do? He did all kinds of things that actually sabotaged him. Uh-huh. Because when you feel behind, you end up doing things that have sabotaged you. Yes. And you'll start acting from a place to try to get ahead when you never really were behind. Mm. You just didn't celebrate where you were. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like I like that you said and 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 thinking about getting quote unquote behind. I think we all have a different race to play. You know, uh, my race is definitely different than your race. And I think when we understand that and when we get a different perspective, we understand that our that God's preparation work is different than somebody else's prep mm. work. Um, and I think for me personally, that's what I had to learn to do for my life because, you know, I might have different dreams, goals, and aspirations, but God's like, Hey, if you want me to build this for you, then I'm going to have to build you a different way. Mm. And I think sometimes we might not understand that because we're too busy comparing like Saul and David, what he did and what, you know, what David did yet. We're never asking God, like, what are you doing in me? in this situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So th- this is, uh, so good. The, the reason that, uh, people are comparing is because of their own lack of clarity. Mm. If they would have said, Hey, Saul killed his thousands and David his tens of thousands. If there would have been personal clarity yes. on what Saul was called to do, mm. he wouldn't have became hurt because exactly. he would have known his assignment yep. versus trying to live out somebody else's assignment. So, mm-hmm. uh, there's a, a verse I just got this the other day. So this is fresh revelation Come on. in verse 22. It says the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Mm. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Yep, yep. And so I want to read it again, but I want you to think from this perspective. Uh, the eye is the lamp of the body. So the vision is the lamp of the body. Mm-hmm. If your vision is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your vision is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Yeah. Yep. So I was thinking like, hey, what is this talking about? So you go to the verse before mm-hmm. it says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy mm-hmm. and where thieves break in and steal, but store for yourselves treasures in heaven. Mm-hmm. And then if you go to the verse after the one I had read, it says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, yep. or you will be devoted to the one, despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Yep, yep. So the darkness was uh, the wrong kind of vision. Mm. When your vision's unhealthy about money, yeah, there's a lack of clarity. Yep. You'll start building for temporal things mm. rather than eternal Ooh, things. That's good. Says, when your vision is clear, because you can't have um, an unhealthy vision about money, because mm. if you do and you're unclear in that area, you're going to uh, become a slave to money because yes, you can't yes. serve God in money. Come on. So if you're unclear, whatever you're unclear to, you become a slave to. Wow, that's good. So either I get a vision for my money mm-hmm. and it serves me, or I don't have a vision mm. and I end up becoming a slave to it. Mm. So where there's no clarity, all of a sudden I become a slave to something. Wow, that's good. And so I, I thought, man, it it's so important to have vision it's so important to have clarity, but most people don't have clarity because they don't have margin. Mm. Uh, someone told me that margin is the birthplace of clarity. Mm. And if you don't have enough space to see from another perspective, mm. you can't get clear and you'll end up running somebody else's race. Mm. So how do we have margin? Uh, I, I think that's something you have to contend for. It's something you have to wake up to. Yeah, like, so, like in practical ways. Uh, yeah, practical ways. Give me a practical. The first thing you do when you wake up uh, – I don't know the percentage, so I'll make it up like I do say 80% of the world. I'm imagining that they probably, um, at least Americans, they probably turn and grab their phone Mm -hmm. and then they probably start to scroll Yep. or they check an email Yep. and their, and their brain and their dopamine's going off and 
their day is being set it set to to be reactionary uh-huh. to what they're seeing and what's happening. Uh-huh. So, what is your morning routine? Do you wake up? Do you pause? Do you have to go get your phone from a drawer that you put it in because mm. it was turned off? Mm. Did you create space? Margin is not like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I have to be, yeah. you know, uh, create all this space so I can do more stuff. No, mm-hmm. I have to create all this space so I can do nothing. Wow. So I can think and pray on what's actually important. Mm. That, what what I should actually be doing today. Wow, that's like, good. What's the three things if I don't accomplish anything today mm. that I should be accomplishing? Yes, 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 yes. I love that. I love that. Um, going back, you talked about vision and clarity. Uh, when I think about somebody in the Bible who had vision and clarity, I think about Joseph. He got a dream and from there brought clarity what God was going to do in his life. But then later on in his life, you know, there's this one moment where he's interpreting a dream for the butler and the baker, right? And then he tells them, don't forget about me. But they forgot about him. And you know, there's moments in people's lives where when they feel behind, they feel overlooked. Mm. Have there ever been moments in your life where you felt overlooked? Like, dang God, like I'm running my lane. I'm not comparing, but I just feel like nobody's noticing me. Like, like what's going on here? Like, have, have, that, have you ever been through that moment in your life? Yeah, there's probably uh, two parts to that. Because once again, to normalize that, I think everybody's felt that way. Mm. And then you add insult to the injury by not only feeling overlooked, yep. but then actually being overlooked. Yeah, yeah. It's one thing to be like overlooked mm. and then another thing to be rejected. Mm. And so uh, when you already have the foundation of that kind of marginalization of, hey, I feel like I'm being overlooked. Mm. And then you you get rejected on top of that, like yep. straight up, not not yeah. kind of. It, it adds this other mm. insult to this injury. But uh, one of the things I'm learning more and more is and encouraging my sons is mm. take personal responsibility, yeah. which means don't look so much on what people are doing to you. Yeah. But the three questions I, I like to ask is, as a result of what's happening or how I'm feeling, God, what are you doing in my heart? Because mm. I'm responsible for my heart. Yeah, that's good. Yes, not sir. Not for other people. Yes, sir situations yep. and circumstances or what they're doing to me or not doing for me. Mm. What are you doing in my heart? How do I plan to grow from this situation? Mm. I'm going to outgrow it, not just go through it, grow through it. Mm-hmm. And and what's the next God honoring process step that I need to take. Mm. And when I turn inward and start talking to God and let God deal with me, I become better. So if you can, the Bible says the fear of man is a trap. Yes. So if you can outgrow what you perceive as rejection mm. in one season, yeah, you just realize, oh, that that just wasn't the circle for me. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Season. yeah. And you quit taking things personal because now you take things as lessons. Mm. You take things as God growing you, mm. and you never get uh, promoted out of a problem. You just get promoted into new and bigger problems. Mm, I like that. And so, if you get promote it into new and bigger problems you better have a bigger character to handle it. hey come on somebody otherwise you're getting promoted into places that you won't be able to stay that's so good that's so good and going to the overlook rejection part um why do you think god allows it why do you think he allows us to be overlooked man like if they hated him yeah <laughs> why would they not hate us yeah because um, you know like david man poor yeah. guy yeah he's out there being faithful and there's probably people listening right now they're like Pastor TJ, I'm faithful, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm crushing it. Like, and my heart's pure. I'm trying to do, you know, work and do things in excellence. Yet, man, I just, I don't know. Like, what, what am I doing wrong? Or is it God, like you're saying, like, God, what are you doing to me? Is it a waiting thing? Like Re- rejection reveals. Re- oh, rejection. Reject- Break that down a little bit. Rejection reveals what's happening in me. Mm. Obviously, it's a tool of character development. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's a tool of do I rely more on God's acceptance or man's acceptance? Mm. Do I want to please man or do I want to please God? Mm. So it reveals a lot to us when we go through those kind of seasons of injustice. Will we secure our own justice or will we rely on his? Yeah, so good. Will we defend ourselves? If you think about uh, the term when the scripture said his grace is sufficient, sufficient yes, sir. Sufficient is not an amount or quantity mm. in the Greek. It was, uh, to ward off or to defend. It was like a mm. circle. 
that you hide in. Mm. Uh, so when he says your grace is sufficient, he's not talking about amount mm. or quantity. Yeah. He's talking about a defense. Come on. So the moment I need to defend myself, I'm taking the place of what grace is supposed mm. to be doing for me. Mm. So if I have to speak up and defend and quit rejecting me and try to prove myself and self justify, yes. then I'm not relying on his acceptance. Dude, that's so good. Let me, let me, let's tackle this because like, like we're talking about when you do feel overlooked, there's a sense of proving yourself. Now I got to prove myself more. I got to prove, I got to prove, I got to prove. Yeah. But then that means that we, we're not operating in grace. We're operating in law because it's, it's my works, my way. And I think we have to be careful because that's a trap, right? Of like, I got to put it all on me because I got to get myself out of that. And that's not really relying on the grace of God. Like when I think about Joseph or David, they just trusted and like, you know what? What's for me is going to find me, you know, yeah, yeah. like I'm going to just do what I'm called to do and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to take care of business and yet let God handle the rest. And this uh, kind of goes into something we talked about earlier. And it's cool because it's something that I listened to you, uh, to you in one of your sermons, by the way, y'all, please check out Heart Revolution Church. Uh, Pastor TJ preaches an incredible word. Uh, I'm always tuning in online. But two weeks ago, you talked about discipline. Yeah. I think sometimes when life gets delayed, it's because we're not disciplined. Mm. I think sometimes we have a part to play. You know, it's like God's like, dude, I'm going to come through on your behalf. But on your part, you're not being disciplined. So like you want me, you want the blessing, but you're not willing to be disciplined. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes we overlook that like yes you may feel overlooked but for some you're overlooking the discipline how important is that uh in our lives yeah i think that the other thing to acknowledge is feeling behind mm. you actually may be behind yeah no that's true <laughs> you, you yes yeah, sir so the tools you use to get ahead might be the problem not the feeling itself Ooh. the feeling is not necessarily the problem. Yeah. But before I talk about that, let me talk about the discipline aspect. Proverbs 25 says that uh, not being disciplined brings mm. forth death. Yep, yep. So just think about any area of your life where you lack discipline. Mm. Think about yourself as a murderer. Mm. Oh, I'm just not disciplined in my eating habits. You're bringing death to your body. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just not uh, disciplined with my finance. You're bringing death to your mm. resource. I'm just not... Uh, you know, discipline and going to church, you're bringing death to your faith. Life. Yep. 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 Wherever you are not disciplined, the fruit of that is death. Mm. And so um, I, I'm a, my, my whole life's message is the message of God's grace. Yep. I feel like Paul where he's like, I got one, one thing that I want to do is testify of the good news of God's grace. Come on, come on. So with God's grace, everything I need now for the future, I already possess in, in, in Christ, in Christ I'm yes, fully sir. accepted. I'm fully approved. I'm loved. I'm a son. There's nothing I can do to disqualify myself from being a son. Yep, yep, yep. So that's the grace of God. Now I have five sons, and my oldest son he wants to be a, a world champion jujitsu fighter. Hey, come on! So I've Shout seen out his level JJ. of discipline and focus and determination and the way he trains, and and I'm like, like this guy wants to be a champion, and he's doing it through his behavior, not just yeah. his belief. Yeah. And so I realized he's always going to be my son. Mm -hmm. So he's a, a, a son, but he's also wants to be a champion. Yeah. And so in, in Christ, we're sons and daughters. Yeah. What kind of son do you want to be? Yeah. What kind of daughter of God do you want to be? You're a son and daughter by faith. Mm. You're a champion by choice. Hey. Discipline does not save you. Mm but discipline stewards what you're saved for. Mm. The Bible says walk in a manner that is worthy of your calling, Worthy, uh, which means by sa salvation, I'm worthy of that because yep. of the way he walked. Mm -hmm. My calling is not based off the way he walked. It's based off the way I walk. Yes. Yes, sir. So I could be saved. I can go to heaven, but it doesn't mean I have the discipline to actually bring heaven mm. to earth. Come on and live like heaven mm -hmm. wants me to live. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of times I think um, people don't know the empowering part of grace. Yep. The empowering part of grace is that it teaches us yep. to live godly lives. Dude, so good. So good. Man, that's actually really good, y'all. I, I know y'all just, just that segment, you guys should rewind it because you said some deep things and nuggets that were just incredible right there. Um, 
going back to this conversation and talking about what do you do when you feel behind um, in this in this conversation when you feel delayed um, Sometimes we don't understand that what God delays is because he's developing something mm, in you. Yeah. So every delay, God's developing. Yeah. Um, but not only is God developing, I also feel that God removes. Yeah. And I think sometimes when when he's working on you, he's building you, he's also removing things, right? Um, I'm reminded of Hebrews 12.1. Did you think you preached on it last week? Last week yeah. you preached on it, how there's certain sin and things that could easily entangle us, yeah. right? But also too, I also think there's certain people that God removes in our life because what God's doing, not everyone who's around you um, could help you or be a benefit in your future. They could act potentially sabotage it. I think about someone like Gideon Bishop where – you know, he, God's just removing certain people. And you one moment think it's like 5,000 people that are with him to 300 people. Yeah. And those 300 people were the people that Gideon, that God chose Gideon to use to go against and, and fight in a battle. Um, have there ever been moments in your life where God just like started removing people and, and he did it in a way to, to actually prepare you because maybe they were a crutch or maybe they were stifling you. Yeah. Have, have that ever happened to you? I think it works both ways and maybe I was stifling them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they need it. Yep. Something yep. new in their life. I think life is filled with seasons mm -hmm. and circles of people that yep. change over time. Yeah. And we should be grateful for every circle we experience. Mm. There's uh, people that God removes from our life. And then there's people that drift from our life. Yeah that wasn't necessarily a removal as much as them evolving and continuing on their path and mm. us evolving and continuing on ours. Yeah. I just realized like, um, in relationship, there's, there's not many of them that you hold on for the long run, mm. but you can honor those relationships. And the moment they had in your life made a huge difference. One of the ones is, uh, when I was about 14 years old, I lived by next door to a, a missionary mm. and he had had a moral failure and been out of ministry. And he had this huge Bible with all his, his notes in it. Mm. And he, he gave it to me one day and he's like, Hey, I'm probably never going to use this again, but I want you to have it. Wow. He would take me to work. He, he poured into me, mm. he, he spoke life into me and that made a huge difference mm -hmm. as to who I am today. Yeah. And I don't speak to him much these days. Sometimes I'll send him a message just, checking on him but mm -hmm. we don't have a relationship anymore yeah but the moment we had that relationship in the season mm. has made a lifelong difference wow come on so it's not who can i keep in my life forever but when i'm in somebody's season let that season be so impactful yeah. that it impacts their forever dude that is so good lord that is really good um here's another thing um we talked a lot to, I mean, about a lot of things, but like maybe right now somebody's listening and they're like, okay, I hear you too. You know, mm -hmm. I, I hear what God's doing. Um, I hear you guys are challenging me to, to discipline myself, um, trust in the faithfulness and the grace of God. But how do I like wait? Well, like yeah. what, what are some like clear, um, biblical wisdom that we could help people to wait well in this journey, you know, yeah. because we don't know what, yeah. What, what, when their hours come, I, I love Jesus in the gospel when, you know, he's like, my hour hasn't come yet. You know what I mean? It's, Hey, let's be honest. Some people are probably there right now. Like, yeah. dude, my hour hasn't come yet. Like my opportunity is just not here yet. You know, um, how, how could they wait? Wow. Yeah. Christianity is not denying our realities. As mm -hmm. I said earlier, maybe you feel behind because you are behind. Mm. Maybe you feel behind because you are behind. So what you use from that feeling let it be information, not direction. What, what, how you try to get out of that determines a lot. Mm. You know, for example, I think a lot of us try to get out of it through anxiety. Yeah. But anxiousness is a trap. And so one time there was a season in my life where I really needed to secure my future. Mm. That's, I think that's like a huge root. Like I, I really need security. to secure my future. Yes. And because I don't feel safe and because I don't feel secure, my anxiety starts to increase and then I feel trapped mm -hmm. and panic starts to overtake mm -hmm. me. And I remember the Lord speaking to me one day because I wanted something so bad yeah. and I needed it my way because that was the very thing that was going to make me feel safe mm -hmm. and make my future feel safe. 
And this line has like stuck with me forever. Hey, whatever you're anxious for is my revelation to you that you're not ready for. Mm. Whatever you're anxious for is my revelation to you that you are not ready for. Mm. So the more that anxiety that you feel, Mm. It's calling for you to surrender Mm -hmm. because the father has the plan for the future. Yes, he does. And if I'm anxious about my future, it's probably Mm. because I'm lacking trust in my father. Wow, that's so good. And so trust in him. Mm. Don't lean to your own understandings. Yes, sir. Uh, So what does waiting look like? It looks like waiting. Looks like waiting, yeah. It looks like stillness. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between isolation and solitude? Mm. A mindset. Yeah. The isolated man seeks his own interests, mm. but solitude mm-hmm. to be alone with you, your thoughts in the Lord and him to work out things in you yeah. to prepare you for the future Absolutely. that he, he has for you. And some of the ways to do that is by the renewing of our mind. Mm. So um, I heard it said, and I kind of rehearse it sometimes when I have that feeling of oh, I'm behind, yeah. you're not behind, you're beloved. You're beloved. Yep. The voice of God speaks over Jesus, says, this is my beloved son mm. in whom I'm well pleased before he does a miracle, before he opens blinded eyes or raises the dead, before he begins his ministry. Mm. The voice of affirmation Come of, the on. Father of this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased, not because of his works, but because of who he is. Come on. And when I rest in that fact, his finished work, that I'm beloved, I'm not behind. So good. Because what, what, where are you trying to run to? Exactly. Don't run past his love. Stay in it. Yeah. And let it take you wherever you need to go. Yeah, man. I think that's a perfect place right there to end. Just knowing that wherever you're at in your life, God is not leaving you. He's not forsaking you. Okay. Matter of fact, God's forming you. Yeah. You might not see it or not. I, I like to change words around Bishop because when I hear the word waiting, yeah. it gets me anxious, bro. Yeah. I don't know why. When I think of, I got to wait, but. When I hear the word waiting, I hear the word preparing. When I hear the word waiting, I hear the word developing. When I hear the word waiting, I'm like, no, no, no. God is forming you. He's doing something beautiful in you. Trust in his process. So with that being said, you guys, um, we hope that this conversation blessed you. Pastor TJ, thank you for your wisdom, your revelation, your nuggets. But before we end, would you mind praying for our community? Um, I know... People are blessed with this conversation, but just giving them a prayer to to help them to to be able to endure this situation because yeah. the, the the problem with waiting with God is He don't give you a time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, at least when we go to Disneyland or yeah. wherever, 50 minutes or last weekend I had friends over. We're we we're going out to eat. How long's the wait? And we, we were calling people to see how long the wait was. Yeah. And the lady said one. A restaurant said 45 minutes. The other said five minutes. We chose five minutes. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'll I'll pray and close out. But um, my son, he's going to get his license, Mm. but he's going to be 18, not Mm. 16. Uh huh. And so I I purchased him a car. Come on. All of that. But I think about when I make my kids wait, Mm. it's for them. Mm. It's not for me. It is an inconvenience to me. Wow. For my son to not have a car. Yes. Because now I'm his taxi. Yes. I drive him <laughs> everywhere. I have to take yes, him sir. everywhere. Yes, sir. I have to stop my whole schedule to go pick him up for him to do hobbies. Not for him to do responsibilities, to do hobbies. Yes, sir. It is in my best interest that he drives. Come on. But I'm not going to put him in jeopardy if he's not ready to drive. And I'm not going to make other people unsafe if he's not ready. Yep. And so wait, waiting for him. Mm is to protect him Ooh, it's out of love it's to not, protect him come on it, it, and I, I love the way he he's waiting uh because he's not anxious for it either because he has a sense of maturity that he wants it in the right time too and in the right time in, in the meantime is not his father providing for him exactly and in the meantime while you're waiting is not your father providing mm-hmm. for you maybe it's not how you want it to be yeah but God's still providing for you in the way that he is. God, that is so good, man. I know. I just, just, thank you, Jesus. Dude, man, just knowing that waiting is protection. It's love and protection. It's love and protection. God loves you so much that he's like, son, wait. And I'm doing this to protect you because I love you. You and others, I want a good future for you. Yeah. No, and I see that too. People in relationships like, 
hey, I'm protecting you right now because you ain't ready for that relationship. Yeah. You won't destroy that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, if I get you in there, you're going to destroy that. And, and I just love that waiting is protecting, man. That, were, that's so uh, beautiful. I, I know we're supposed to be done, but no, we keep uh, going, keep going. It's flowing. The children of Israel, they were like, we're hungry, we're hungry, we're hungry. Like, give it to us. And then they ate so much manna, it was like coming out of their nose. Like, mm. we're sick of this, we're sick of this, <laughs> we're sick of this. Yep. It's like, Hey, what you want so bad today, mm. the thing you were praying for so bad, now you're like tired of it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Take this away from me now. It's like, let it be tempered. Mm -hmm. Let waiting temper your temper desires. You. Yeah, yeah. So when you get it, it's with, with open hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just receive it. That's it. I'm not reaching. Mm -hmm. I'm receiving. Mm -hmm. There, The posture of grace is receiving, not taking. Mm, so good. And when I give to somebody, I love to give to people who receive. Yes. Not to people who take. Dude, so good. It's hard to sow into entitlement because that's bad ground to sow in. But somebody who has humility and a posture to receive, Come on. there's fruit in that. Ready for yeah. Oh, so good. And so uh, I like to give to people who have the spirit of receiving mm. because it's out of humility. Mm. But whenever there's a taker, it's out of entitlement. Mm. And grace is opposed to pride and entitlement. So there's no blessing in it. Yes. So some people, they'll take from you, mm. but they won't receive from you. Mm. Some people will come for their benefit and take what you have, but they don't want you. Yes, sir. But some people will receive what you have because they want everything that about you that actually, mm -hmm. they don't just want what's in your hand, but what, what's in your heart. What's in your heart. What's in your heart. That's so good. God, Lee, that's good. Now we're going to leave it all on that because yeah. you, you, you just, you just killed it right there. And I'm going to have to probably rewind that and re-listen to that. Cause that, that's some gold right there. Um, with that being said, Bishop, could you pray, pray for the community, man? Yeah, thank you guys for joining today. Let me say a prayer, but more than words, if wherever you're at, if you just take the next 10 seconds to, to breathe. Yes. When you breathe, you think about the Spirit of God, the breath of God that He breathed into the dirt mm. and man became a living soul. So feel the breath of God, feel Come the on. Holy Spirit, the Come Holy on. Spirit that came like a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were mm. sitting. And I want you to hear the voice of God that spoke over Jesus. We became one with Jesus and he wasn't just speaking mm. over Jesus, but he was speaking over you. Yes, You're my son, you're my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Beyond your works, beyond your performance, I'm well pleased. Well pleased. And so we can rest in this prayer. I'm not behind, I'm beloved. Mm. Father, we pray over them today, blessings of stillness and solitude, hearing your voice, receiving, growing through trials. Yes, Lord. Thank you for letting us be a part of the journey, for leading us and guiding us into mm. all truth. All truth. We declare your, your truth. Mm. Your truth is we are not behind. Thank you have God. a perfect time, a perfect plan, and you're, you're helping us to walk it out. You're developing our character mm. so we can look more like you and mm. live more like you. We are not behind. We are beloved, and yes. we thank you for your love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What's the highest body count you would wipe a girl with? I'm looking with? for a wife. Does body count matter? Yes. Five to seven guys per girl. What is that real body count number for a woman? Can I get your body count?